Welcome friends, welcome to my natural food factory. Hold your breath, make a wish, count to three, and come with me, and you'll be in a world of pure imagination. What you see will define explanation. I really do feel like Willy Wonka out here a lot of times. I'm just, I would say the natural version of Willy Wonka because all this candy, it's, it's made from nature. And I do call it candy. Look at these sweet right here, these sun gold cherries, man. The sweetest tomato you'll ever have. My favorite flavored one. So delicious. And uh, there's a lot of things that I find these gardens to be comparable with Willy Wonka. That's one reason I'm making this video. I'm gonna open up that understanding a little more as the video progresses, but let's just try this, uh, this first tomato of the season. Nature's candy. <laughs> so incredibly sweet, so delicious. It's a, it's a little ironic and also a blessing that my favorite tomato happens to be the first one that's ripe of the year. One of the more unlikely inspirations to this garden was actually that scene in Willy Wonka, that pure imagination scene. I have always just wanted to encapsulate that feeling uh, that amazement that you look into that factory and just like this garden you can't even see everything around every other corner There's another gift or another surprise and that's what I'm trying to do here But with natural food even to our uh, left right here. We'll notice we've got a wild plum growing nice looking plum right on it So it's like everywhere we turn there's another piece of food to eat. Let's try this out. I've never had these before Nice and soft to the touch it's a very small plum. This is a wild plum, a roadside plum. Mmm. So good. It's like a it's like a big cherry. Delicious. Let's keep moving though. I want to show you some more of this Wonka like uh, garden where it's just everything's packed together and and without the right eye you might not even see everything. Right here we've got some holy basil, Tulsi, an incredible basil, it's an incredible smell too. So good. And then we are passing by a dill right here. And to the right of me, another dill. We plant these dills here. One of the reasons we put our dills next to our tomato, because this is an early warning system for the tomato hornworm. If you have tomato hornworms, they're gonna go for your dill plants first. You come out, check your dills. If they're on there, then you know that they can be on your tomatoes. Let's keep going though, because we've got tomatoes here. We've got apples above us. We've got a loyal dog. We've got carrots next to us here, just unlimited carrots. As many as you can pick. Right, Tuck? Give him a carrot there. Tomatoes, pears. We've got blueberries. And, and the amazing thing about this, uh, this natural factory is, is it is a factory. Is I see this garden, as we look at these blueberries here, some of the pink blueberries, I love them. The pink lemonades and the blues right here, planted next to each other. So look at these ripe ones up top here. But I consider this garden to be like a factory the difference is, is that this is a natural factory made of living biological parts. So I've talked a lot about how a garden is a living biological machine, but this is a factory. It's constantly moving and changing and it's never static. It just looks and appears as if, as if it is because the pace at which this factory moves, moves is a lot slower than a normal factory. So to the naked eye, it might appear as though it's staying still, but we're constantly in motion, constantly growing more food so that we can eat it and enjoy it. Natural, organic, right from the backyard. Just like the Wonka factory, I want this place to just take your breath away when you see it. I try to just put as many things in as I can. You can see all the grapes over here that are actually, we're getting some ripe grapes. They're gonna be so delicious. This one I could probably taste, it's probably so good. So you'll see all the fruit is really starting to ripen. The things are honestly starting to come together. All the work from the years and the investments are, are all coming together at once and, it, and it's a good feeling to be able to come out here and to get food from it. Definitely still sour, but getting that sweetness, we're getting closer to ripe. Nothing's better than fresh grapes. Well, maybe fresh peaches, fresh strawberries and fresh blueberries, but there's nothing better than fresh food. I wanna step back here into this keyhole raised bed, looking great. And we've got a nice zucchini ready to harvest. I just showed you guys last video where we buried the zucchini stem. It's working out well for us. We're getting food from it. We've got a neck, the next zucchini just lining up right there. 
As we move along over here, we've got more grapes along the back, doing really well. Cucumbers are getting big right here. Let's grab this little cucumber. Tomatoes underneath that, cucumbers between that. And the cucumbers that are growing in this bed are starting to trellis their way out, looking really good. We're gonna get some mulch down in this bed, but we've had so much rain lately that it actually hasn't been that much that hot, so without mulch, it's working fine right now. And in this uh, deep raised bed, we've got the green beans all in. We've got the dragon tongues mixed with the rattlesnakes. So I personally like the dragon tongues better. I'll definitely be growing more of those in the future because this is just my favorite bean. And I think the little guy likes them too. Hey, Tuck, bean boy. This guy usually prefers the dragon tongues just like me. So I guess one of the big differences between me and Wonka is I don't have the little, the little guys working for me. I've got a, my little guy is actually the boss. So Tuck's the boss of the garden. He runs things. We kind of follow his instructions. So he's always guiding us in the right way. Behind me over here, we have the, the sunflowers that are about to open these heads. These are multi-head sunflowers. These are the purple sunflowers, the purple heads too. So it's not just gonna be your typical yellow sunflower. We like to do things a little different because if we can, we, kinda, we, we wanna drop your jaw. That's kinda our goal. Even if this wasn't food right here, to me it's just so beautiful. And there's something about it. It, it just gives me a good feeling. All the green, the pink mixed in, well, maybe because I know there's food coming, that's one of the reasons I love it so much. But look how pretty these zinnias look in here. The tomatoes have gotten huge. The carrots are doing excellent. Beautiful spot for carrots in here. Let me swing around the back and show you how tall some of the, these tomatoes have gotten. Look at this tomato right here. I think it's way past six feet already. And it has so many tomatoes on it, just on the cusp of being ripe. So I, there's so many things to enjoy out here, like these tomatoes and then right to the right of me, another apple tree right here, loaded with apples. Beautiful looking apples too. Excellent. It doesn't stop there though. We've got blueberries right next to me here. I've got blackberries in the back. And then just in typical Wonka style, I've got the citrus in the back here, the trifoliate orange. So it's not your true orange, the regular orange you're gonna get in the store, but if it's unique and it can grow and you can eat it, I'm probably gonna put it in the ground. So that's what we did. We've got the oranges back here. It's not super exciting to see because they're just little green oranges right now. But if you're a gardener, it's just exciting to be able to grow citrus in New Jersey. It's, it's pretty fun, zone 7A. Let's keep moving though. In my opinion, a factory like this is the one you wanna work at or work in or work for. Because when it comes to gardening, in my opinion, everything makes you healthier, all aspects of it. So if you wanna start a garden, you have to get outside, which is good for you. You have to grow it, the food, which is good for you. And then you have to eat it, which is great for you too. And when you're growing your own garden, growing things like cucumbers and stuff like this, you start to learn what real food tastes like and what real food actually is. So when you go to the store, you can actually realize and uh, you know see what is and actually isn't food because a lot of the stuff that they sell in the stores looks like food, it doesn't taste like food though, and it's not food. So sometimes just growing a garden like this can open up your understanding. It overall just makes you healthier because of, some of the, so many of the aspects and attributes that come along with it. Tuck sneaking around looking for a cucumber, but these are big ones. This guy usually likes the little cukes. Let's grab him a small little cuke right here. Hey, Tucky boy, right here. We'll do it for him, we'll snap the top and we'll let him go to town. Delicious cucumbers. He gets a piece of it too. So, I mean, so many blessings come along with a garden and a factory like this, a natural one, where its main production is food and enjoyment, in my opinion. And we've got the peppers right here. They're starting to actually form some peppers. The Criolla de Cocina looking so cute and shriveled right there. Next to it, the Jimmy Nardellos. A lot different style. Basil's in the back, more tomatoes over there. I meant more peppers, the Tunisian Bacloti. And then next to me here, more peppers. Uh, I'm excited for the, for the harvest that are going to come along. That's why it's so fun to be a, a part of this factory with a, almost like an assembly line of food where it's constantly coming down the hatch. And different kinds of peppers, like here's the apple sweet pepper, and right here is the California Wonder. So we're growing all different kinds of varieties. Still the monster kale right there. And then next to me is the Prigioni apple. In, in that little nest up there we've got baby, little baby birds that are, that are alive and the mama was just here taking care of them, but I don't want to stay by it too close. It's just an incredible thing, in my opinion, 
to have a tree that you planted from seed, this is the Prisioni apple, and for it to grow and produce fruit, that's incredible, but for it to grow, produce fruit, and then to have uh, birds, you know, having their next generation, getting their sustenance from it, it's, it's pretty cool. It's, it's fun to be a part of it, a part of nature when you're out here. Instead of feeling like you're on the outside looking in, you get to be a part of the whole system, which is awesome. Grapes looking fantastic. Really happy with the way they look. As we come over here, we make sure we have a lot of flowers. Not that we can eat them, but it does add that Wonka, that Wonka feel, I think, by adding all the colors and everything. The bees love them. And even the Eastern goldfinches will come and they like the seeds at the end of the season. The, the figs over here are looking fantastic, still getting bigger. They're still going to need a little bit of time, but looking good. The pears behind this, the tree doesn't look good, but the pears look pretty good. This pear tree probably needs more light. Uh, the fact is that the hazelnuts have taken over this section, but that's exactly what we wanted. Hazelnuts is like, nuts themselves are foundational trees. We want those in here because they're gonna last for such a long period of time, produce an incredible amount of food, and their storage capacity is amazing because we can make nut butters or just store them as they are. So overall, an incredible, versatile food, nuts in general, and I love hazelnuts so much. Pears right here, hanging out. Again, we don't like to have that many spots where we can't just reach food from one tree to the other. So pears right here, we can grab them right underneath. While I'm hanging out in the pears, we could always just reach over and grab persimmons back here too, loaded. And as you look down here, you can see all the asparagus. So this will be all next year's food. We have to wood chip it uh, because the ground has actually sucked up all the wood chips or as I like to say, the fungus have eaten all the wood chips. So that's looking fantastic. Overall, the garden is, is I would say at its peak, it's the best it's ever looked. And I'm happy about that. And I knew that would happen because when it comes to gardening, that's really what it's about. It's about the continual progression. It's not about going into your eighth year and being like, or your ninth year and being like, oh, it's the ninth year, let's go. It's about taking the last eight years, gathering them together and investing it into your ninth year. That's gardening and that's a food forest. That's a food factory. That's where we're at. That's today's video growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Me and Tuck had a lot of fun making this one. We know that it might've been like a little goofy or silly in the beginning, but we'll do anything we have to, to encourage you guys to get growing, to just get out there to get something planted because we know that there will be so many blessings that come from that. And once you get started, you're gonna stick with it because it's something that just every year the garden grows, you grow and you get more back from it. So it's super rewarding to be a part of. I wanted to thank Shannon Goble, uh, one of the new channel members. It means a lot to me and Tuck that you're a part of Team Grow and we just wanted to thank you right here and now and say that we really appreciate it. I also wanted to say to hit the like and subscribe button on the video. Also, check out the merch down low. And remember, whenever you're on Amazon, start your shopping with our Amazon affiliate link. Me and Tuck aren't sweating as bad today. It's actually a really nice day today. So he's still hanging in the same spot that he usually does over by the hazelnuts, just watching us finish. But we'll be back real soon with another one. We appreciate it though. Talking James, we 